Asantini. What's good fam? Hope you're doing good today and living your best life wherever you're watching from. Today I'm joining you live from Bagamoyo. Right now I'm at the Bagamoyo bus station. Now from Dar es Salaam in a place called Taget and Yuki, you can come here for around 1,000 800 Tanzanian shillings get a local bus and come down here. So it's gonna be a vibe today um, I'm with my homie here Yo, what's up everybody? Yeah, my name is Yasin and I'll be with him tonight. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's my homie Yasin He's gonna be showing me around showing me what time it is around here and Bagamoyo is a very historical place an important cultural center here in the country of Dar es Salaam so we'll be exploring Bagamoyo OMG Bagamoyo town today guys so stay tuned to this space peace out it's a little bit about it the floor is yours fam uh, okay for instance this is a fishing boat uh, according to the to the local people so that's how it's done So that's how they fry the fish guys so bagamoyo and a lot of these local type of boats that you're seeing here they are bringing cargo to places like zanzibar and pemba island parts in africa and right here is actually the remnants of the livingston church these are the churches which um, he built and of course maintenance has happened over the years Okay guys, I'm really super excited to be on this journey with you today as we explore Bagamoyo town, a really historical town here in Tanzania and in fact long ago this, this part was actually the capital of German East Africa. Once upon a time, you know, German co colonialized many um, countries here in East Africa and here Bagamoyo was the capital of that German East Africa a long time ago, right? So here was also a slave trading post so a lot of when they used to bring slaves from the interior part or kidnap people I should say from the interior parts of Africa they'll bring them here and then trades will ta have taken place and then they'll be sent to different parts of the world some goes to Zambibar, Zanzibar, Pemba, the Arab world some even ended up in the Caribbean, America, different places so Bagamoyo is a really historical town here in Tanzania apart from that it goes so that was around the 19th late 19th and early 20th century and then apart from that the history of this town goes way back to like the 8th century as well because it was an ancient Swahili settlement here you had ancient African peoples that had kingdoms in this part which is known as Bagamoyo today so this is what we're going to be doing we're walking around seeing what time it is here in the town Okay guys, now you know from the last video that we did in Dar es Salaam I said to you every video I'm gonna to try to put some Swahili words in here so you can learn After all in Swahili in Tanzania, Swahili is the language of communication That's right baby, people love speaking that language here So if you have a few phrases could get you a long way once you land here and you come to Tanzania So today I'm gonna to teach you a short phrase The phrase of today will be Tutakwenda safadi njema katika mji wa Bagamoyo and what that means is today we will go on a on a nice journey or a good journey to the town of Bagamoyo okay so let's say that together tutakwenda safadi njema katika mji wa Bagamoyo leo tutakwenda safadi njema katika mji wa Bagamoyo and that means today we will go on a good journey to Bagamoyo. So what are some of the words you learned today? Safari, it means journey. Leo, like how you spell Leo, the Leo constellation, L-E-O. Leo means today in Kiswahili. Leo, Leo, not Leo, Leo. And then after that, Katika is in. Mji is town, a word for town, Mji. And that is the words you learned today. From the last lesson, we already learned that Quenda means to go. 
Now, when you put the prefix to on it, it becomes we, T-U. So to, to Taquenda means we will go. So that's your words you learned today, guys. I hope you found it interesting. Now, let me hear you say it right now. Leo to Taquenda Safadi and Jema Katika MG Wabagamoyo. Good. I like that. You all are learning quite well. Let me So you have seen which part of town is this here in Bagamoyo? Ah, uh, Mwambao to Kupanda Mwambao. Okay, Mwambao. Mwambao. Okay. Uh, so the name of the place is Mwambao. And they got different restaurants and everything like what you're seeing right now. It gives me a, a, a little vibe of similar to Zanzibar, really kind of Stone Town feel. And we're gonna pass by the fish market, like I told you, this place is coastal, so we get to see that. And you have the boats just roaming around casually. One of the features you'll notice in Tanzania, they don't tie them or anything like that. Goats, cows just roam freely around the various towns. We're in Bagamoyo, Bagamoyo. Place of leisure. Also a place of hospitality. This is a local kind of food spot. You can get local food here. I'm seeing mainly like um, mishkaki, chicken, chips and stuff like that. And of course in the morning time you will get other things for breakfast and tea, tangawizi, ginger tea, different things like that. So the typical coastal flavor here in Tanzania. This building here reminds me a bit of a big building which I saw in Kilwa Masoko, which is in Kilwa. It's one of the, the like almost like a castle, one of the big castles of the sultans. And I'm seeing the similar um, structure with this building right here. We well, notice the people from the coast, the ancient Africans who used to live on the coast, all of them were creative in building these type of stone structures throughout the coastal region here in East Africa. And it's something that you will see a lot when you, when you travel to different parts here in Tanzania, especially on the coast. So right now I'm currently on the port here in Bagamoyo and a lot of these local type of boats that you're seeing here they're bringing cargo to places like Zanzibar and Pemba Islands just off the coast of mainland Tanzania so you can see the fishermen and the different people who works here they're loading them up before they head on to various parts so they'll bring different cargo from clothes, fridges, fruits and vegetables and different things like that
Yeah, a real coastal feel. You know, a lot of local boats. People just strolling around on this lovely, caught, cloudy day, doing their thing, you know, and all of that. Yeah. So, you are seeing you're saying some things what a lot of these people are doing. Yeah, it's a busy port, and right now you can see everybody carrying a bucket. Yeah. So, this is what the business that's functioning here, selling of fish. Okay. They are taking from the boats that these uh, fishermen went to fish, they are bringing now. Now people are going to buy as a retailer, small, small business people, then they are going to uh, fry and sell them in the streets. Okay. So what's happening here right now? Yeah. So, yeah man, people get in their paper, they're doing what they got to do to earn money, and, you know, when the fisherman brings their fish up, people will come and buy what they need to buy, and they just go and sell it in different parts, say in bag of oil, fried fish, and different things like that. So it's a good vibe, I'm liking it. A lot of the ancient style boats, like these boats, Katika Kiswahili, it's called uh, Jahazi. Jahazi. Yeah. So the, the local boats that you're seeing there with the white sail, they're known as Jahazi in Swahili. Um, and I really like them, man. You know, when you watch like ancient programs where they talk about like the biblical times or whatever, you see these type of boats in there. So you always feel like you're going back in time, walking here, seeing these um, type of really beautifully crafted local boats. Definitely Bang Bagamore will give me a Zanzibar feel. Yeah, it feels like um, Zanzibar. And a lot of the sultans in Tanzania, they, they, here used to be one of their main places they used to live also, Bagamoyo. So that's a vibe here. So we're getting closer to where people are doing their business eh? This is where the fishermen are bringing up their fish And one of the things that whenever I go to coastal seas I really like seeing how people do their business Especially on the beach with the fishermen and stuff. So this is a vibe here. And they'll clean the fish for you as well. So you know if you come here, yeah, you might you may visit here yourself. You have seen what what's like the best time like to come and buy fish? Is it in the morning time or in the evenings? Yeah, if you want fresh the, uh, fish fresh fish is in the morning because uh, these fishermen leave uh, the harbor in the evening to go and fish overnight okay so once they come in the morning you get fresh fish okay so like around what time around uh, maybe from uh, 8 in the morning yeah. a.m. Okay. to 9 in the morning it's a good time okay so you know, if you could come out, if you're in Bagamoyo, you want to get fresh fish yourself, you can come like around 8 in the morning. And to be honest, from my experience, like even in cities like Dar es Salaam, if you could come even earlier than that, earlier than that, like let's say 7 a.m. in the morning, you can really come out and get the, 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 the fish, fresh fish, because the fishermen, they bring it in early. So this is like a local boat guys that's being made right now and Yasin is going to tell us a little bit about it. The floor is yours fam. Uh, okay, for instance this is a fishing boat. Uh, according to the, to the local people, 
Uh, constructing a boat like this one may take a, a month and a half. It's almost something like uh, 60 days or yeah, 45 days. Uh, and uh, the type of wood is being used here. There are two types of wood that, uh, according to the to the builders, that told us they are they are being made of. For instance, this is the tree or the wood known as bulgum. A bulgum. It's a uh, water resistance. Like, but the, they say the problem with this, it's accumulate a lot of water. But we have another tree which is known as a uh, karatusi. For those people who are from Tanga. They will understand because it is the mostly famous used in constructing such boats, such boats. So the mkaratusi is a good and it doesn't shrink so much. But the problem with this one is it lives in between spaces once it has been constructed, once has been built. So it takes a longer time when you use bolgam compared to the mkaratusi one. So this is all about this fishing boat. Okay. Yeah. And um, so this boat is mainly used for fishing. Yeah, mainly used for fishing and transportation of goods. As you can see, as we were passing there, it was a harbor whereby I people were shipping goods from water, bring them uh, on land. So this can be used for transporting of goods, and yet can be used as a process of fishing. Fishing. Okay. Yeah. That's good, man. Thanks for letting us know. So it takes about one month, you say, to construct this boat? One and a half month. One and a half. Month. It's okay. a big boat. It's a very big one. Yeah. So this is where people come and buy fish. It's easy. Yeah. Alright, now I'm in a park 
in the Bagumoyo market where they actually bring the fish that you've just seen and they'll fry it, right? So this is how some of it are just advertised here. So we just bought some and this is it here. So I'm gonna try it, they put a sauce on it as well. And let's see what it tastes like. Mm. It's really crunchy. We got a nice flavor to it as well. I guess that's because of the sauce. But this one is quite bony, so you gotta be careful, especially with the small fishes, they're quite bony. But it got a nice flavor to it, I, I like it. It's real nice. Mm. And especially with the sauce in it as well. Yeah, I like that, delicious. And like I was saying, fish is a staple here and the people diet on the coast here and it, it's in everything from breakfast, lunch, dinner. Fish is always incorporated. And this is how the guy's frying it here. So that's how it's done. So that's how they fry the fish guys so trying it out let me finish eat this and i'll see you on the next one okay guys you know what i've said to you in the past that bagomoyo was once the capital of german east africa and when every time you go to come to tanzania brother have you got um a thousand tanzanian shillings yeah, man, so if you come to Tanzania, this is 1,000 Tanzanian shillings, right? Now, if you turn at the back, you have a picture of a building, all right? And that is the German old Boma. And this is it live and direct you're seeing on your screens right now. And it was the headquarters of the German, German headquarters during their time as Bagamoya being the capital. Of German East Africa so you have seen um, so this is like the German old bomber is it is, is it still used today do you know anyone uh, for currently it has been reserved as a national treasury okay do you understand yeah uh, typically I'd say it is where the Germans settled and established uh, uh, they established themselves as they were ruling back then here yeah. yeah okay so this was like the White House back then back then yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So for now it's just uh for now it's a reservation area yeah for like people who want to see the history of history, history yeah okay so guys this is it really um it's just being preserved nothing's really happening here it's not being used or anything like that so this is what you expect to see if you come and visit and surround it surrounding it here will have been other parts to the building a long time ago and it's it's in a strategic location where they will have seen the coast so any kind of intruders or anyone trying to attack them they could have seen and right at the top there will have been they will have had cannons and different things to protect themselves in in the event of any attack so this is pretty much it guys nothing's really happening here this is a german old boma it has been preserved i can see that they have done some a bit of restoration work on it but nothing's pretty much happening here this is what it's like inside it's a bit dark in here, but I'm sure you can get a, a slight view of how it would have looked like. This would have been a real grand place in its heyday during the time of the German administration here. So that's the old German bomber, guys. So after exploring the old German bomber, we took a border border to Kaole. Now Kaole is a small town and also an archaeological site which is around three miles away from Bagamoyo right. town. So that's the vibe guys here you will find a lot of ancient ruins, mosques and also tombs of some of the leaders at that time period. Now like I said to you the history of that region there in Bagamoyo can be dated back to the 
eighth, even the sixth century. So this is way, way before the German period and all of that. These were indigenous African peoples, and you also had people who came and interact with those indigenous people, people from Persia, Chinese, and different people came and exchanged ideas, trading was taking place, and so on, right on that site there. So this is all that have been left of this ancient town here. Um, the ruins of it now around the ruins not too far away from where I took this video there are of course other local um, villages and some of the people still do hold on to some of the traditional beliefs from ancient times even certain rituals are still performed in this area you're seeing right now that was I've been told by my guide so yeah this is just a clip that I did so what you're witnessing right now is basically just remnants of the mosque that was once there and some of the tombs burial sites of some of the leaders and important people of that time period <laughs> So, of course, you'll notice when you come to the coastal side here in Tanzania, for the most part, people's religious follow the religion of Islam, yeah? And here, however, at one point in history, you had David Livingston who came here and established certain churches on the coastal side and also other parts in Africa. And right here is actually the remnants of the Livingston church. These are the churches which um, he built and of course maintenance has happened over the years right but this is the church that we're seeing right now so again a quick view of it this is what it looks like from the outside it seems like it's real re really maintained and although you'll find a lot of people in Bagamoyo are mainly Muslim you do have a lot of people who also practice the Christian faith and they are Christians here a lot of the time you will find that a lot of the Christians come from other regions in Tanzania as well but they're doing businesses on the coastal side in Tanzania so you are seeing this is the church by David Livingston exactly okay yeah back then even the missionaries who came here to spread Christianity yeah this is one of the Catholic church that used to assemble and um, call the congregations here at Bagamoyo. Bagamoyo. So when Dr. Le Dr. Livingstone was making his route around, yeah. one of the stations he stayed was Bagamoyo, and this is the famous church of known to be him as the Dr. Livingstone Church of Catholic. Okay. So this is it here. 
and the church is literally um, not too far from where we were previously by the fish market and you saw the auction going down there and stuff like that so yeah this is where a lot of the missionaries came and did a lot of work to propagate the Christian faith um, on the coastal side here in Bagamoyo Another thing I want to quickly add, it's funny how certain things could be preserved here yeah? because if you look, and when I say things being preserved, I'm talking about ancient beliefs about certain symbols because this is a church, right? But at the very top of the church, if you look, there's a compass with um, a rooster and that is very interesting because apparently I've been told a long time ago Roosters was believed to be a symbol of good luck and it was a, it, the missionaries they incorporated that in their buildings to attract their local people when they brought them in to convert them to Christianity and stuff they used the symbol of the rooster there which is right on top the compass of the church there so that's very interesting it's a mixed feeling being here because a lot of the people who were kidnapped a strategy that was also used to quote unquote save them from being sold into other parts of the world to be cut, to be used as slave they will be able to be saved and a lot of them would have come here and they would have converted to Christianity so they won't be sale, be sold into slavery and stuff like that so that's really interesting here bit of a mixed feeling so that was one of the way in which they had gotten early converts to the religion of Christianity here on the coastal side here in Bagamoyo so really interesting here guys and let me know if you guys know anything more about the symbol of the rooster and what it symbolized leave a comment in the comment section below yeah guys so I trust you have enjoyed today's vlog we really explored Bagamoyo we saw the fish market we saw some of the ancient city in Kaole there from way back in the sixth century and yeah guys we really explored today we even saw the church which was established by David Livingston and we had a good time man um the homie Yasin really did a good tour with us today thank you very much Yasin any last words you want to say um, to the people welcome them to Tanzania actually what I can say it's been a great day it's been uh, fun today so for those who haven't been to Tanzania we warmly welcome you with great hospitality welcome Tanzania welcome Karibu Sana Tanzania yeah Shukrani Sana Bwana Santa Sana yeah so Karibuni Tanzania people definitely come and check it out there are a lot of places you can stay here as well. And I do have a course where I talk about budget travel in Tanzania. So check that out, link in the bio, and also I'll pin it in the comment section of this video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Peace out.